am Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, The Opening Call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's opening call, folks. Come over to our, news, our website at TFNN, hit newsletters. You're going to see it right on the left-hand side, right in the middle. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one year for $11.95, which saves you $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Okay, so you can go over there, check it out, get a great newsletter for the month. Basil has approximately 10 to 12 great archives, learning archives, just like going to a university so you can really understand how Basil looks at the market and how you ride that wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Have a good Thanksgiving? Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah, it was. And we know this is the only day, folks, that the week that we take one day off. So everyone has four days off. And that is heaven because that in is. our business, yeah. we never get that. So, yeah, that was That's cool. That's right. No doubt. And also, it's nice to, this is one of the first times in decades that we had it at my house. Oh. And we actually have leftovers. You know, when you go out, it's great, except you never get leftovers. So <laughs> and it's so worth it. You know, I, I, I go through that myself. Sometimes you go out, folks, and it's great. You don't have to clean up. You don't have to make it. Because the, the cleanup is harder than making it. You know, it but I, we, clean, we, we cooked, too. And I'm glad we did. It was awesome. It was amazing. Yeah, right. Nice. So, so looking at the Dow, this is very interesting. So the Dow, as I've been mentioning for, I guess, months now, is that my, my contention was that the Dow 30 is not the Dow Industrials anymore. It's Dow 30, and it's a real good mix. And it's a real good mix for this particular economy as it stands right now. So the Dow has been leading. So we've been along the Dow since the day after the low in October. And uh, we've added to that with uh, three times long. Now we've taken quite, quite a little bit off in small, tiny chunks as part of money management. And I didn't want to change that. But what I did on uh, yesterday, well, today, Tuesday, it feels like <laughs> more than two days. It does. Uh, uh, yesterday morning before the opening, we went uh, along the uh, three times short the S&P. So the only reason I did that was I wanted to keep core positions. We don't have any shorts. That's the only short that we have. And my thinking was the Dow is the strongest. The S&P is uh, weaker than the Dow. The, the QQQ is much weaker. But there's there's a lot going on the, in the queues. So I thought the S&P, even if it's just a trade, that's what I wanted. And one of the reasons is this. You can see in this Dow chart on the left, this is, on the left is the daily, in the middle is the weekly, and on the right is the monthly chart. If you go backwards, the monthly chart has finally broken the trend line that's been resistance for a long time. So it's the first time in 2022 that I can get a strong leg A to the upside, but I haven't got any real buy signal or buy, buy mode in the monthly. It's just a really good candle. There's a lot that has to happen. The MACD has to cross positive. It's going to take a lot to do that. On balance volume is good, but the stochastic is rounding, but it's still only at 28%. Then if I go to the weekly chart, there's a technique that I use called Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent or Propellant. It was a repellent zone right here, this green and red little mini channel. And uh, finally, we broke above it. And for three weeks going to Friday's close, it was nicely above the downtrend line. And the nine period moving average is sharply above the 14. That to me is really positive with the MACD strong stochastic holding steady at 89%. But in the, the near term, the Dow looked to me like it's a little bit choppy. Still, the nine period moving average is good above the 14. MACD just turned down. Stochastic still strong at 89%. But my thinking is we could have a digestive phase and we could start to pull back. And really, the 33, we're at 33,829. Between 33,000 and 600, 33,300, that's going to be key support. If we take that out, it means we're going to be in for a little bit longer of a, what I call a digestive phase. But now the interesting thing is this. If you look at the S&P itself, the S&P made this almost like a double top at 4,028, touching the 200-period moving average in the daily chart. And then it, it pulled back to the 9-period moving average. And then it ran up and for. Uh, right yet, uh, this what I call peak G slash C at 4,034, it's stalled and it's pulled back. 
If you look at the MACD, the MACD started to turn down. The stochastic still good at 89%. But I'm thinking that the there are levels to watch, and I'm making it as simple as possible. If the S&P, uh, the low today is uh, 39,037.65. If we start to get below 39.33, then there's a real good chance that this is going to last a little bit longer than just a brief timeout. It could get a little bit deeper. So I, I'm looking at this purely technically. If you look at the weekly chart, you'll see that in the weekly chart, you've gone from uh, this trend line resistance that I call the inside track repellent zone. And all of the last three weeks while the Dow was breaking out, this couldn't go above it. So I'm suggesting that there's, there's been a huge move up, just as you were talking about gold a little while ago, saying that, that was a fabulous move. You usually expect some kind of a digestive phase. doesn't mean to say you have to short and you get, just a digestive phase. In this particular case, I am shorting because there were so many stocks that I looked at that made exact double tops. I mean, even a stock like a Raytheon, which is, I mean, in the uh, defense area, yeah. you usually find that defense just keeps going up no matter what happens. But look at this, 98.02 uh, back at the beginning of November, it pulls back to the uh, 92 level, and then it pushes up. And then what does it do? For three days now, it hasn't broken out above the 98.02 level, even today with good news about uh, Raytheon, because I think it's a Finland that they're going to give um, some military um, help to. So we're looking at 90, uh, 98 round number on uh, yesterday, and today's 97, 91. I just love that these resistance points, they're very subtle, but until the market or what you're following actually breaks out above it to turn a resistance level into a, into a support level, I just take it that this is, it's really like, it looks like churning in the sense that money's going in, but it really isn't pushing the uh, price higher. So there's so many stocks, even if you look at a Goldman Sachs, <clears throat> Goldman Sachs, the 389.58 on the uh, October, the uh, November the 15th, pulls back, and in one, two, three, four, five, in six days, what does it do? It rallies back and it can only get to 389.44. So either all of these are ready for some spectacular move to break out to the upside. My thinking is we're in for a, a digest. We've started a digestive phase, and I think I'll be speaking to you for about four weeks, saying I think that we're starting to get a little toppy in the sense that the upside is getting a little bit more difficult. But you've got just one leadership, and that's the Dow, and that's been breaking out. But the other indices haven't, and it's even the same in oil. Look at this Exxon Mobil. I'll do more of this in my show tomorrow. I'll show some of these uh, amazing double tops, triple tops. Look at this. Exxon goes screams from down in the 30 area. Uh, two years ago, uh, rallies all the way to 114.65 big D. And then for three weeks, it's almost four weeks, it hasn't been able to break by one penny, the 114.66 high that was made. It's very fascinating. So I think we're just stalling here, taking a breather. And folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go to newsletters. You'll see Basil opening call on the left-hand side. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom, and I'll be doing more of this tomorrow in my show. Yeah.